A cry for restoration is indicative of the fact that the thing in question ought not to have been taken away in the first place, don't you think? Watching a video of Onyeko Nwenu recently as she spoke about her personal experience during and just after the Biafran War, and it was apparent that the lessons of that era were etched in her mind and soul such that she was able to speak with intent at the Never Again conference. So let me ask a question that many have asked before me. Why again did we take history out of our school curriculum? What are we afraid of? We look at the disconnect between our policies and how they impact or fail to impact on our dysfunctional society. And it is apparent that a lack of national identity is at the heart of this disconnect. It's time we got real with ourselves and identify our strengths and weaknesses as a people. History is the best teacher in the school of people discovery. It paves the way for a future that is free from recycled errors. The World War experience was one of the inspirations behind the European Union. The reasoning that building a better union in Europe would ensure that the World War experience never again repeats itself. Here we are in Nigeria, a bouquet of cultures and ethnic groups. The need for history in schools and in our media outlets is key to building a more secure, stable future for all of us, especially in the current climate where the opposite is evident. I'm aware that the policy was passed last year to bring back history to our schools, and so this is when the real work begins. We need schools to be held accountable to act in accordance with this policy. We need good history books and good history teachers. We all have a part to play in this. I propose we personally wage a campaign in our schools, like I've just said, for a national curriculum that tells the comprehensive and interrogative history of Nigeria. More than ever, it's time to bring back our history. I totally agree with you on this. You know, it's so important for us to go forward. We really need to know where we're coming from. Also, the thing about history, it, it instills a level of pride, a level of value, a level of self-worth in the individual. So now, going back to your sometimes slave, makes you cry. It makes us cry. No, but it goes back to but, your slave, but, yeah, slave exactly. mentality. Yeah. Um, you know, the reason Africans do better than, you know, um, Af um, the so-called African-Americans and whatever the case may be is because we still have a sense of our history. Most of them over there don't really know where they okay. come from. They don't even know, um, they don't really know our values Ancestry and everything. And yes, and they're grasping, they're doing their best to try and hold on to something. That's why they continue saying Africa, motherland and all of that. Meanwhile, they don't even fully understand what that means. Okay. Um, no, 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 some of them want to yes, they reconnect want to, yes, to motherland, that, but they know it's motherland. Mm -hmm. But the, 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 <laughs> they know the, it's motherland. Yeah, they know this is motherland. but. Those of us who have the, 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 the pride yes. of remaining and retaining the motherland mm -hmm. are gradually forgetting exactly. you know, the history. Meanwhile, those that left wants you know, to imbibe yes. the yeah. history, yeah. Mm -hmm. they, they, they feel, look, oh, you guys are lucky. Mm. You should be able to trace your family genealogy up to Can go this. To your exactly. village. But for this, I don't, I really don't know. I don't have that identity. Mm -hmm. and, and so for me, that's why history I History is about identity. And because... it's also just, okay, no, sorry, quickly. It's not mm, just about the ahead. secondary school or primary school. Mm. It should be a curriculum, even in the university, you take it as a compulsory course okay. to a certain level. Okay. Okay. And okay. so with that, you imbibe it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you now, even in your normal life, you now want to learn and right. read about right. history. Yeah. Yeah. The thing about our history is that we, as Africans, we know that there was life be beyond the slave trade, yes. life before the slave trade. We know all these things. Now, um, the African-Americans and all those people, they don't know that. So we have that um, value system that we got from our royal days and everything. That gives us a sense of, of, of being, a sense of identity. And that also is the sort of thing that pushes us to be better, to, to maybe strive to go back to when we were you know, royalty and, and we were doing so well. Because it's amazing. If you really, really study African history, you'll be, you'll be shocked to find out that we were the first to do so many things. Mm. We built, if you see the Benin, is it the Benin, Benin Kingdom? Oh, yeah. I mean, the architecture back mm -hmm. then, mm -hmm. would yeah, anybody that's believe? About that's that's yes, yeah, that's, you know, why, I was that's why it was called a city. Yes, mm -hmm. because, but look at it yeah, now. There's, yeah. You can't even the, see, we won't a preserve anything. A Portuguese writer said that Benin had, that he was amazed. Mm -hmm. And when they first came to Benin, that yeah. they had street light yes, as mm -hmm. far back yes. as at yes. that time. Mm -hmm. They had streets, all these streets. No, this local lamp. But still, it was a thought out process. 
And yeah. so and all the streets had lights and they had and the streets were well paved, well yes. swept. Yes. And yeah. You, you know, see, you don't even know. And that's why that and that's is. why you find out that most um, black African Americans would rather watch this your epic movies yeah. than black the Panther. ones where you try to be like American. Um, yes. When I was in um, in secondary school, yeah, so the very first year, history mm. was made compulsory mm. for all students. And be you science or arts, you had to take history. Okay. But at the time we got to the second um, year, which was, I think, SS2 now, history was, um, you know, it was an optional yeah. course. Yeah. It was an optional course. And at the end of the day, there were just two students in the whole school doing history. Doing oh, history. Okay. Do you know why? I didn't do history, to be honest with you. Do you know why? Be okay. You know why? Because we, that's why I said you make it compulsory because we read to pass and then also, what can I do with history? Mm. That's so the question about, on no, the no, mind no. of the when student. Coming to my point, history is good how for about, the about, how about mm. um, a situation whereby the young ones are not interested because they see history as probably you know reading about dates, no, studying no, about no. you know things that happened Sandra, in the past, and then Sandra, you want to go forward. Let me correct an no. impression. <laughs> let me correct an impression. Mass. A lot of us were not interested in maths, but, but it was compulsory mm. because we were made to. Mm. For history, the first question people would ask is, what will I do with it? And there's a lot you can do. And there is a lot you can do with mm -hmm. it. And then with the loss of jobs, the, we gradually started pushing this humanities mm. to the background. You must be a professional, mm -hmm. read professional courses. Okay. And, and so you look at all the mix. You want to read law, government, uh, one social science and two uh, maths and English. There is no history in the mix. Mm -hmm. So with all of that, gradually we, you know, naively pushed history to the background. There's also the point of relevance. Mm. I also got admission. My first admission was to take, was to study history. Oh, good. <laughs> to be really? honest Somebody with you, I hated history. it. Oh, I love history. You know, to be honest, you, I'm in the arts. I'm in humanities. But to be honest with you, I hated it. Wow. Probably because of the way it was being taught. There was no background. Yeah. Maybe because they, they, of the way it was being taught in schools, and everything was oh, okay. So p we oh, we have the you know mindset that history is just per and purely theoretical. You can't relate to it. <laughs> yeah, you can't. See. You can't even picture it I in your mind. No, no, no. They just no, really. No. How they were no. taught. It was how we're taught. To be honest with you. I it was fell in love with history yeah, because of how too. I so was taught what? history. So were you taught? Yeah. I was taught, that my history teacher, I was taught history, I won't say I fell in love with history in Nigeria. It was when I went you to the were, UK okay, okay. and then my teacher was so good at bringing it to life and and I, I, looked, that I could to actually I was just going to say until it, in that exactly. yes, until, yeah. it, on, until it hits you like you're watching TV. Something. Mm. You can picture no, it, it in it, your it, mind. Let, then it's beautiful. Let me, let me also quickly correct an impression because mm. I, was in, I was taught history the way you were taught, mm. but we, we were made to understand, because ours was class one to five. Yeah, same we here. were made to understand that this is the way to go. And so, whether you liked it or not, mm. okay. you wanted to be part of this new way to go. Okay. And with time, we started understanding it, mm -hmm. irrespective of the teacher. And that was the way mathematics also. There are some people who hated mathematics, not because it was difficult, but because of the teacher. I mean, I'm sorry, I mean, we should make this point. And let me quickly, let me round up on this, please, please, please. <laughs> okay. Because it's very important. It is, it, it is a Kenny's topic. Yeah. It should allow us to choose. No, I should, actually. Okay. Yes. Go ahead. Topic. Oh, so, mm. you find out that, take the history of Usman Danfo, yeah. Till mm -hmm. as I am now, mm. that was something I did in primary four. I could still tell you with dates the history of Usman yes. for Yes. Because it became part of us. We needed to mm. understand what these people did differently. The story of Mansa Musa, Vasco da Gama, yes. Amerigo yeah. Vespu say. Now that he's you know, saying it, I actually no, but want you know, to fall you know in love with history. For yeah. um, I mean, yes. when I was no. studying history in Nigeria, we had all that, but we didn't have any real history on Biafra. Yeah. I don't remember it's why you did. But the curriculum the today yeah, apparently was more includes recent that. History the recent than curriculum includes that. Yeah. The thing we need to push for, because the reasons they gave, I just want to quickly chip that in, were these reasons, and I felt they were very flimsy, uh -huh. that nobody was interested in doing history, that uh, you can't do anything with it. Those are the reasons they gave. No, those are the reasons they gave for interested. taking it out of the curriculum, but unfortunately, it's not okay. a valid so reason. You like yeah. it's you can't just take out. Yeah. But we need to work on getting good history books and good history teachers. Yeah, a lot of history books. When you de-emphasize it, 
when you do the history, history lover to teach when you de-emphasize it, it yeah. people will not be interested in it yeah we started emphasizing law medicine yeah. and all of it's those what things true. and i'm no, so you're people right became interested it's a priority in true. we really need to be looking at the way forward um and, and empowering our teachers getting the right textbooks I, over to you parents over to you uh, everyone listening i'm convinced that owning our history is at the foundation of national identity and development after the break, Libros also speaks of reconciling past events to move forward. He speaks of the Nigerian project and Igbo presidency. Five panelists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed, it's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they want. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. What, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese, if you don't repay your debt, they will just call it.